Do you want to take a look at probably what is the most flexible Raspberry Pi? Would you like to use a Raspberry Pi intended for industrial purposes in your smart home? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you just some of the possibilities that are available. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 in your smart home. And this is not one you may have heard of, but it's one well worth taking a good look at. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesworunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available in the the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Well, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. First of all is what is the compute module for? Then we're going to talk about the required items, which you've got to have to start with, and then some things you can look at down the road. Then we'll give you an idea of setting up the compute module for. Well, the first thing we're going to talk about is what is the compute module for? And as you can see, it's a about half the size of a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, this is the second generation. This one actually has two rows of connectors on the back that will connect into a, well, I'm not going to call it a motherboard, but an I.O. board, because this is going to have the bulk of what you need, and the I.O. board is going to let you connect to everything on the outside world. Now, it's not going to be as straightforward as you're getting a Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4. You're going to have to to watch your different variations of this because, and I'm, there's no kidding, there's 31 variations of the Commute Module 4. The easiest distinction is if you see one with the word light in it. And if you notice up there in the central top part of the chip, there's a missing area. That's where the flash memory would go. I've gone for the light version and both I bought two different CM4s. I've gone for the light version because that way I can treat it just like I would a regular Raspberry Pi 4. I can flash it the same way the SD card or micro SD card rather goes in on the IO board and we'll see that here in just a moment. Then it's a matter of does it have Wi-Fi or does it not? So that's the other thing to think of and you'll see it right here if you notice it's I didn't get a good angle on it but you'll notice two black rows on it and this is what connects into the I.O. board. Now, this is a variation from the CM3, which was the first generation of this. As I understand it, Raspberry Pi had to go to this particular setup because of the amount of I.O. that was going to be coming off of the CM4. There are four different holes there, and that's going to help you orient it to the I.O. board because there's only one way this goes on. And if you put it on the wrong way, it's not going to work, and you're going to notice that the CM4 is going to overhang your I.O. board. So that's something to think about. Now, this is very straightforward i've got two versions that i bought both are the lights which means they have no onboard flash and you can still flash it you just have to deal with it a little bit differently i've got one that has no wi-fi and the other that has wi-fi like i said these are meant for industrial applications internet of things system controllers you name it these have a standard to them and there's going to be a lot of functionality that i think will really serve you well now this is the io board this is the part and this is the prototype one to use the raspberry pi foundations terminology this gives you an idea of where to start and there is a lot that you can have fun with here now it does go back to the standard hdmi size connectors that's a plus for me because i've never been a fan of the smaller connector uh, you've got a place for a battery i believe it's a cr2032 that you'd use to keep the real-time clock up and running. You've got three display connectors, a camera connector. You've got your GPIO pins. You name it, this thing's got it on here. It does have uh, one gigabit ethernet port and there's only two usb 2.0 ports again this is a prototyping board so i can deal with that and there's you will see another option here in just a bit of what you can do the just you'll see it down here and i was, I was pointing like you could see it if you look to the right side of the card that's 12 volt power connector and that's right i did say 12 volts because this board is going to have to have that kind of power You'll see why here just shortly. Now, just to the left, that's where your micro SD card would go in. And since I've got the light versions in both my compute module fours, this is where you will stick your micro SD card with all the boot code. Here is the part that's interesting. If you notice that little black connector just to the right where it says compute module four, that is a PCIe Express. 
And yes, you can do some cards and two of the ones I'm going to show you, and there's more coming that you can see this has got a whole level of expandability to it. So this is something that gives you, if you really want to take your Raspberry Pi work to, to the next level, going to the compute module four is going to help you get it there. As with anything, okay, this is just the board. You're going to have to have some sort of platform or holder for it because you can see there's exposed items on the back but with typical maker community there's options already out there if you know someone who has a 3d printer or if you've got one yourself well then here's what you're looking at now i did this one in red pla there's you name the colors there's out there they do have posts in there and you'll get to use this i believe it's the m2.5 screws so you can fasten this down so you have a little more support for it i'm probably going to modify this one because i'd like to have a couple more support posts out in the middle just so that you've got better support of this io board because i don't like flexing the board especially in the middle so that's something that I'm going to work on. So you can see there's quite a bit to do with this one. Now I'm going to show you a couple of boards that let you take this to the next level. Now, some of you have probably seen my videos on OMV4 and OMV5, that's Open Media Vault versions four and five, where you can make this a small NAS. Well, guess what? You can now with a SATA board, and this is a four port SATA board, you can run drives directly off the Raspberry Pi without having to use a USB interface. Now, this is not going to do hardware RAID. You will be doing software RAID, and that's using MDADM. And again, that's in the Open Media Vault videos where you can see how that's going to work. Now, you'll probably want to have to take that bracket off, and it's going to be a little bit Frankenstein-ish as to the wiring. But again, this is a learning platform. There is a board that I've seen that's, well, it, it almost got released, but then because of the current shipping problem and the pricing going way up on some of these parts, the company actually pulled the board out of production. So there is one that will take the compute module four, plug it directly in and place the IO board. And then you've got a very compact RAID system to start with. So this is option one. You can tie in up to four SATA drives. If you still want to go the USB route, which there's nothing wrong with that one, you can look at this board and it has two USB 3 connectors and it's also got a USB-C. As far as I know, I've not had a chance to go through the documentation in great detail. This is going to give you something that you can get more USB devices. Now, if you'll notice as we swing around here, there is a connector on the right hand side of the board. You will have to plug this in to a PC power supply so that if you've got devices that need power, that this is how you'll supply power to the board and then it hands it off to the USB connectors. And there's going to be some things we're going to have to both work on. And I've already got one power supply I'm going to do this with. And then you'll see initial step because we're not going to have it in a conventional computer case of what we got to do to make the motherboard think I and mean, get the power rather at a point. There's something we're going to do to get the power supply to think it's in a conventional case so that it will power up because they've got a safety mechanism that if it doesn't see certain things, it won't do it up. Well, we're just going to have to help adjust its attitude. So you can see, I mean, there's there's USB 3 uh, ports you can put in here. There, is, there, We can go USB 3. We can go SATA. So this is a, a variety of options that you can look at to do this. It's a very functional situation. Same basic process to burn a SD card for the CM4 with the mod the modules that I've got where I don't have onboard flash. And I did it deliberately because I wanted to keep it in the conventional way I'm used to doing with the Raspberry Pi 4s. Now in a industrial situation, yeah, you probably want the flash on boards. One less thing you got to worry about because typically in industrial situations, not a lot is going to be changing. But this at least gets you one step further down the road to trying some other things that a conventional Raspberry Pi probably is not going to be able to do. Now, some of the boards that we've looked at, the SATA card, let me get that up here. The SATA card is about a $35 card and you'll see a comparable price for the USB card. So you know, you're getting into more normal type of cards, but so they're going to be a little bit more, but not that much compared to what you paid for the Raspberry Pi and the IO board. So this is something well worth looking at. You're going to see me using this in future videos as soon as here in the next few days, because I've been started a series on learning RAID. And with this, we're going to be able to transition to having multiple drives, both SATA and USB. Now, fair disclosure here, getting those cards to work is going to take something called recompiling the kernel. 
So it's going to be a little bit of a learning experience for you, but nothing that you can't handle with what you've already been doing with the Raspberry Pi. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.